Hey guys, this is Dan, aka Better Coder, and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to extract an embedded resource from an assembly. Let's say you embed some files into your EXE and you want to extract them to the user's desktop or something. Well, I will show you exactly how to do that. The first thing we're going to do is create a new project, and for this example I'm just going to create a console application, but the code behind everything is the same. And I'll just call this Extract Resource. And go ahead and hit OK. So before we write any code, we're going to pick what we want to embed in our executable. And here are two files I'm going to embed into the application. So it's the HXD, it's actually another application, it's a hex editor that I use a lot. And Song for Saturday is just a tune I wrote, well, on Friday for a gig that I had on Saturday. <laughs> and I called it Song for Saturday. So the first thing we're going to do to embed our resources is just drag them right into the project. Now they're not automatically selected as embedded resources, so what we have to do is click on them. Now you can hold control and click on multiple ones. And then go over here to build action. What we want to do is go down to embed resource. And now they are officially embedded resources. Now we're going to write the code that actually grabs those resources out of there and writes them to a file on the local computer. This is going to be a private static method, so it's going to be private static void. And I'll just call this extract. And the first parameter is going to be a string and it's going to be called and it's going to be the namespace of the calling assembly. So we already know what our namespace is in here, but if you wanted to include this in a library or something, you'd have to include the namespace. So I'm just going to add that here so it's much more extensible. And the next one's going to be your out file. What do you want it to be called when you write it to the desktop or when you write it to the computer? Next one is going to be a string and it's going to be the internal file path. And what that's going to refer to is if these were not just right in the root directory of our project, say if we wanted to add a folder, just call it new folder one, and they were in here, we'd have to tell the code that they're in that folder. So that's the internal file path. I guess for now I'll just leave these in a folder so I can show you. And the last parameter is going to be a string and it's going to be the resource name. So now we need to add a namespace declaration up here. So we're going to do using system.reflection. And that's so we can use the assembly class. So the first thing is going to be assembly and I'll just call this ASS, wow that's bad, assembly, I'll just call it assembly, equals assembly dot get calling assembly. And what this is going to do is get a reference to the assembly that calls this method. So since, even though we are using the exact same assembly here, if you put this in a library, it would get the assembly that's calling this method. Now the next thing we're going to do is a using statement, and what we're going to do here is get a stream of that resource. So to do that, we have to go up here and add using system.io. So what's going to be here is using stream, and I'll just call this s equals assembly dot get manifest resource stream, and we need to pass it the name of that item. Now we need to give the exact location of this resource in our assembly. So it's going to be our namespace, and to separate them out, we use a period in between instead of a plus or anything. So it's going to be our namespace dot, and then the internal folder path, which is the new folder one, and then dot the name of the actual file. So it's going to be namespace plus dot, and then plus. And the next part is going to check if it is in the root directory and you do not specify an internal file path, well, we don't need to add another dot in there. So we're going to check if the internal file path equals, well, a blank string. What do we want to do? Well, we'll just put a blank there. And if not, we will add the internal file path plus another period just to separate that out. And then we can close that parenthesis. And then plus the item, which is the resource name. I guess I have to close out the parentheses there too. <laughs> Now what we want to do is get a binary reader which reads that stream. So we're going to do using binary reader, and I'll call this r equals new binary reader, and we pass it the stream, so s. We could put that in brackets again. I'll clean up these brackets later and it'll look a lot cleaner and nicer. The next thing we want to do is start a new file stream. So we're going to do using file stream, and I'll call this fs equals new file stream, and what we want to do is pass it the directory where we want to create the new file on our computer. So we already specified that. So it's going to be out file plus now the separator for the path and then plus resource name. And then what we have to do is also choose the file mode. And well, we're going to just open or create if it doesn't exist. Now to clear up some confusion, I actually meant to say out directory right here. So I can just change that to out directory right there. It specifies what directory you want to put that file into because the resource name is just going to be named what you call it right there. Now that we open the file for reading, what we're going to do is using binary writer, and I'll just use w equals new binary writer, and we're going to write to the file stream. And then the last line of code is going to be w.write, and what do we want to write? Well, we want to actually read the bytes from the resource, and our binary reader right here is actually reading the stream from the resource. So what we want to do 
is r dot read bytes. And then how many bytes do we want to read? Well, we're going to cast this as an int because it takes an int count. And s is our stream. And we'll do s dot length. And that'll give us the exact length of our stream. And that'll tell us exactly how many bytes we want to read. And then we'll write that into the new file. This is actually all the code to extract an embedded resource from an assembly. So right now, since these are all one-liners, we can get rid of all these brackets and make this look very pretty. Oops, not that one. Boom. There you have it, the code to extract an embedded resource from an assembly. Now we're going to test it out with our console application. So the first thing we're going to do is console.writeline, press enter to extract hxd.exe to the downloads directory. And the way to wait for that is just a console.readline, and that'll just wait until there's text entered and then the enter key is pressed. Well, that's all we need to look for. So the next thing we want to do is actually extract that hxd.exe. So all we need to do is call extract, and then we'll pass it our namespace, which right here is extract resource. And we need to pass our out directory, and mine is going to be e downloads. The next one is the internal file path. Well, it is in new folder one, and then the resource name is going to be hxd.exe. Now remember this is a blocking call, so if you do this on the main thread, it will freeze your Windows Form application if you are using one. So make sure to call this on another thread if you have a huge file, because if it starts extracting a 2 gigabyte file or something, <laughs> which I don't know why you'd actually embed a 2 gigabyte file, but if you did and started extracting this, everything would be blocked until it was done. And then afterwards we can just console write line hxd.exe was extracted. Now I'm going to copy and paste this again so we can um, do the same thing but for that PDF. And, and press enter to extract song for Saturday.pdf to the downloads directory. And what we're going to change here is hxd.exe to song for Saturday.pdf. And then just a console write line at the end, just saying that it was extracted. I'll just do it was extracted so I don't have to type it again. And the console read line at the very end so our window stays open until we press enter one more time. Now it's time to build and test this out. So I just built it and now I'm going to go to my downloads directory and delete the ones that we started off with right here just so we can see it actually happen. So I'm going to press S5 and I'm going to run the program. It actually opened on my other monitor. So we're going to run it right here. Press enter to extract hxd to the downloads directory. And there you go. It was extracted right there. I can verify it opens and runs perfectly. And now press enter to extract song for Saturday.pdf to the downloads directory. And there you go. It was extracted successfully. That's it for this video, guys. You've now seen how to extract an embedded resource from an assembly using this code right here. Make sure to hit the like button if you like this. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.